Hello there, everyone. Patricia Hayes here with your Coffee Time Career Chat Authentic Networking Edition. Super excited to be continuing the conversation about maximizing your professional networking opportunities um, in your throughout your career and throughout your life. We've thus far been talking about um, conferences and workshops. We've discussed networking and building relationships in your professional development programs and special business meetings. And today we're going to focus on um, being social both online and in person. And I know this is one of those things that's really hard for some people with all kinds of excuses, which we'll touch on just a tad, but um, it's definitely something worth discussing, especially in the world that we live in right now, where we have been limited in our personal contact one-on-one. -on -one. So jumping right in, here is the first point regarding building out your professional networks for social purposes in person and online. First of all, the core piece of this is that if you want to build relationships, you have to interact with people. <laughs> and I know that seems obvious and seems just like that's so insulting to have to say, but you would be surprised at the number of people that I come across who have this, oh, I'm an introvert, or I don't like going to parties, or I don't like doing happy hours, and all of the excuses. But here's the thing. They want to achieve some level of expertise. They want to get to the next level in their jobs and their careers. Well, guess what? You can't get to the next level in your job and career without interacting with other people. And specifically, you have to build relationships with other people in a targeted fashion in order to achieve your goals. Now, if you say, well, I've been able to get here thus far without doing it, you're deceiving yourself. Whether you acknowledge it or not, you have gotten to where you are with relationships that have been built along the way. You just may not have engaged in that thought actively. And this series is all about active engagement and making sure that your career plans and goals get, um, th that they happen, that they occur because you are being active in how you achieve them, not just passive in what comes to you, okay? So all of the excuses that we have, I'm an introvert, I don't like happy hours, it's not worth my time, all of those things can be done away with. If you're a quote introvert, you still have a job and that means you are interacting with people. So that's about interacting with people within your comfort levels at first, but then also making sure that you push yourself outside of your comfort level in some way on a regular basis. These are the things that I talk about in my other parts of my series and throughout my networking um, conversations, but there are ways. Being an introvert is not an excuse for not moving forward. Let's say you're saying, oh, but I really hate happy hours and all of those, you know, fake, you know, forced uh, uh, gatherings. Well, guess what? They were not my favorite either. I mean, back in the day when I was a baby lawyer working for a teacher's association, I had to attend fundraisers where my sole job was to deliver a check to politicians and smile and hand it off. Hated it. Hated it. But because I was the baby on the baby lobbyist on the staff, I got to do that. Well, I had to turn it around. And so I decided to play a little game and make it beneficial for myself. My bosses and my job required me to attend these fundraising receptions where I had to hand off the check. What I would add to it is, okay, but I need to meet up with so-and-so to discuss this uh, potential legislation. I'd like to talk to so-and-so about their trip that they took. And there's two or three people I would really like to meet that I haven't had a, have, had a chance to meet with yet. I would go with a separate agenda that may be professional and affected my work, 
or it may be a little bit personal, but I shifted the focus from how unhappy I was about having to hand off that stupid check to what else could I get accomplished by attending this event. And that made all the difference, okay? So that just means you have to shift your focus. Quit whining about what you don't like about it and shift your focus to what it is you ultimately want to do and what you need to get accomplished. The third thing about um, not having the time. Oh my gosh, this is such a very weak excuse because I teach anyone who's followed me, you know, I teach you how to very simply engage with people and build your network over the course of a year at, le at a minimum, but even over the course of several weeks and months by just reaching out to two or three people a week. That's it. If you minimally reach out to three people over the course of 12 months, you will have come in contact with 144 people. Think about that. Now, if you just said, if I just said, hey, I need for you to go meet up with 144 people, you'd be like, that's crazy. I can't do that. But when you say, hey, how about you getting in touch with three people a week? You're like, well, I can do that in my sleep. You absolutely can. And it can take as little as 15 minutes, whether it's reaching out via LinkedIn. We'll talk about some of that social stuff later, whether it's scheduling a coffee in person or virtually or sending an email, the least desirable, but whatever it may be, all of those things can take less than 15 minutes a week. So not having time, not liking doing happy hours, and, and not having a, a, a and, and being an introvert, not, no, no excuse. There's always something you can do. You start with where you're comfortable and then push towards higher levels so that you can achieve your ultimate goals, which include engaging and interacting with people in a professional manner so that you can achieve your professional goals, okay? So I had to spend a little bit of time there because that's the thing, you know, especially when you hear social, being social and all of that, people are like, and I don't want to do that. Guess what? You have to if you want to move forward in your career, okay? Now, that's the first thing. Number two, number two, let's talk about these happy hours and receptions and things like that. Let's talk about these, quote, social events. Now, over the course of the last year at the time of this recording, you know, we've been in a pandemic and we have been locked down and not having these in the traditional way that we would have, right? There's not been these huge gatherings in bars just to, you know, for the latest professional networking. There's not been uh, receptions and galas in person. None of that has been going on. Instead, all of these things have been going on virtually, okay? So guess what? You don't get to get away from it just because it's not in person. People realize they still need to meet and gather and connect. That is why. So it does not mean that because you can't do it in purpose, excuse me, in person, that there's no need to can you continue doing it. That's not true. If that were true, then all of these things that have been going on virtually would not have happened. But instead, people have um, insisted on finding and acknowledging the value in connecting with others. That's really what it's all about. And so when you connect with others, you have to think about what is it you're going to do and how you're going to do it, especially when it's not in person, okay? In person, yes, there's a different vibe versus if you're doing it online, virtually, through Zoom, whatever it is you're doing. Okay, you have to be deliberate about it and remember your bottom line goal and purpose, which is to build professional relationships that are profitable and that will last. Now, let me revisit this word profitable because people are automatically going to go straight to, oh, you're going to get some money out of it. No, that is not what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about being profitable, I'm talking about for the long haul. So that relationship you have right now may develop over the course of time and lead you to other people and other things that will result in 
a promotion, a project that you've gained some control over, an appointment to a board, whatever. There are so many ways. Get outside of that narrow as, uh, perspective, perception of profit only equating, equating to dollars, okay? That's narrow, especially when you're talking about long-term growth for what you're trying to do professionally. I tell this story all the time. I can say, I can tell you, I can draw a line back from my various uh, internships throughout college um, and particularly throughout law school to my first job. I can draw a line back to my mentor. Actually, before her, to one of my college professors who is the one who introduced me to my mentor who then was the person who led me through this journey just with picking up the phone, uh, you know, whenever there was a need, whenever there was something I needed to work with, and I would be like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm needing to do this. Do you have any suggestions? I can draw a line back to her, okay? Yes, yeah, she gave me a job. It was unpaid. I was an unpaid intern in her office while she worked for a governor, for a sitting governor, okay? So that profit drew out across the time and resulted in internships that were paid internships to a job that was a paid job. All of those things that lead forward, okay? And so here we are 30 years later and I am still in contact with my mentor with that specific person. So she lives across the country. We check in with each other, not you know on monthly or anything like that anymore. It may be two or three times a year where we actually talk on the phone or if we're traveling pre-pandemic, you know, checking in with each other while when we're visiting each other's cities. But otherwise, we check in via LinkedIn. Again, did y'all see? That's the second time I mentioned it about social. We'll get to there, get there in just a second. But there are things you can do and the relationships that connect back. So put those, you know, negative connotations aside. When you go into an event, an activity with the mindset of this is a waste of time, well, yeah, it's probably going to be a waste of time because you have the wrong mindset and you're not going to attract the right people or the right opportunities. But if you go in with saying, you know, I would love to come out of here with one really good contact, not only will you probably come out with one really good contact, you will probably come out with several other things as well. Okay, so think about it. Change your mindset. Change your perceptions. And be willing and open to do something different, okay? Um, I share this story a lot, and, my, and this client has come back to me recently, and I love it to death. But one of my um, one of my coaching clients, when we first got started, you know, she was a tough cookie. She was not into the woosa thing. She was just like, I don't know about all this. And I'm like, stick with me on this, right? Do some of these things that are outside of your comfort zone. Do some of these things that you're like, eh. I said, but approach this relationship building with a different mindset, okay? And when she did, one of the fantastic stories I love to tell is, and it's a true story, is how that she met a priest in a bar and they started talking and it was at some type of happy hour thing and they started talking and it turns out he had connections to someone in the field, the exact field where she wanted to be and he introduced her to that person. Really? A priest in a bar? I'm telling you, we joke all the time about like that is a setup for somebody's joke. <laughs> but so here's the thing. You have to be prepared to receive good things, great opportunities in unexpected places and times. All right. But you can't get them if you're not in the room. You have to be in the room. You have to be there. There are times as much as my job required it, I hated attending some of these receptions. I had no desire to go to another gala. But I would literally think about, you know, but if this one person is there, this might be worth it. 
and I would go get dressed. I'd call my friend who was my, you know, get up and go girl. It was like, put your black dress on and your heels. Let's go. We got a social event to go to. And we would go. And there are all kinds of ways that you can accommodate and make things better. So even if it's online, and all of these things I'm talking about apply in person as well. But even if it's online, you can still invite someone to attend with you. If you're at, you know, at happy hours, if you if you want to make it, you know, uh uh, something that's a little more enjoyable, right? Invite someone to come with you. Um, invite, you know, be be a part of the planning. Do something to contribute to the process that will help you to engage at a better level. And I'm telling you how it will be extremely beneficial to you in the long run, okay? That's number two. Number three, let's talk about social media, you got to be engaging in social media if you want to stay alive right now. And I mean professionally, okay? Um, for anyone who says, I get it. You're burnt out. We're tired of being on Zoom. We're tired of being on Microsoft Teams. Um, our kids are on these electrical things all day. I mean, I totally get it. I have a high schooler and a college freshman, a, a, a high school freshman and a college freshman who have been online this entire year and managing all of this while I am also working online. So I get it. It is tough and we all need breaks. And so my first recommendation to you is to make sure you take those breaks. Make sure you distinguish those activities, whether you're online for per, for for work or professional reasons from those when you're online for personal reasons, okay? Make those clear breaks. It's tough. I get it. I understand it. And we have to do it. And that includes stepping away from it. It's the only way you can stay fresh to continue to engage. Because even as things slowly begin to open up and hopefully we'll be able to start engaging in person more often, the reality is, and the research is showing, is that corporate businesses, they're deciding, you know what? We think that this may be it for a while now. And so there are going to be a lot more people who are going to be working from home for an extended period of time. So that said, how are you going to build out these relationships? How are you going to connect with your colleagues, with your boss on an extended period? This is not temporary. For some of us, for some of you, this is permanent, okay? Some people are not going back into an office environment ever. Some people are only going to go back in, you know, on one or two days a week, you know, maybe to meet up for a retreat or whatever. So you need to start shifting your thinking about how you are going to leverage and connect these relationships from home. Remotely, whether you're working remotely in an office, whether you're working remotely from home, whatever it may be, all right? How are you going to do it? Well, social media is the thing. And I'm not just talking about Facebook, right? A lot of times that's used personally for personal things. That's great. But let's talk about if we're using it and shifting our focus. Maybe we're engaged in some groups. Maybe we're starting to look on Facebook for groups from a professional standpoint, a leadership group, a business group, okay? Folks who are in your fraternity or sorority, probably a lot of people are doing that already. Start thinking about all of those different touch points and how you can utilize them, all right? Groups on LinkedIn, all right. Most people haven't thought about it as much, but LinkedIn is gold, y'all. I've been with using LinkedIn from the time it started. And I started saying then, and people don't even know what a Rolodex is anymore, but I used to say that LinkedIn is my electronic Rolodex. And it has been. When I switched to it, I'm a paper girl, but that's one of the things I gave up. I let go of my paper Rolodex and switched to LinkedIn and I utilize it constantly. Right. So connecting on LinkedIn, if you do not have a LinkedIn um, profile, like you need to do that immediately after we get off of here. And if you need help or assistance in trying to figure out what that looks like minimally, schedule some time with me and we can have a quick chat about it. 
Um, you know, LinkedIn from that perspective is not my expertise. I don't f sit on it trying to figure out how to best engage on LinkedIn, but I do engage on LinkedIn for my professional purposes. Okay. So you absolutely, you need to do that. Um, if you are uh, doing that, it allows you a whole bunch of things. You can engage in messenger. You can send messages to people. You connect with people that you might not otherwise have an opportunity to connect with. I know that I attended a South by Southwest session last week and I was just floored by this one presenter. I was like, oh my gosh, what did I immediately do? I went to her page. I went to her website and I went to her LinkedIn page. And I immediately connected with her on LinkedIn, asked for a connection, said I thoroughly enjoyed your session, would love to connect. Cold. This is not someone I knew. This is someone I got exposed to because I attended an online event, enjoyed her work, and I was like, I need to connect with this person. Okay? It can happen that fast. All right? So utilizing them for that, even Instagram, it totally depends on your business or what it is you're involved in, but each of these platforms has something for someone. You don't have to spread yourself so thin, okay? If you're going to do one or two things, especially from a professional standpoint, I say do Facebook and do LinkedIn, all right? If you do those two, you should be set to get started if you aren't already, Okay, at a minimum. All of these others are extras. If you're in, you know, film or the arts, you're definitely going to probably want to do some TikTok and some Instagram. Um, you know, Clubhouse is up and coming, but it's only open to folks with uh, the iPhone platform right now. But that's going to be a great platform and it's audio based. Um, so you've got to keep up a little bit with what's going on around you because these, these are the ways in which we're connecting and communicating with others. So don't be ignorant to it. You will look up and be realize you've been left behind. So you can fight it and say, I don't want to do that. I don't feel like it. Or you can suck it up, carve out 30 minutes a week and figure out how you're going to engage when. Literally, that is it. I said 15 minutes for figuring out with three people, another 15 minutes for engaging on a platform for professional purposes. That's 30 minutes a week. Easy. We can spend more time drinking our coffee <laughs> every, every day, much less 30 minutes a week. Okay. Um, you want to make sure that you take advantage of the messaging features on these different um, applications. Do not abuse them. If you are in sales of any kind, do not do that. Like I have started deleting people automatically without responding because they kind of come off like, oh, I'd love to get connected. And then the next thing they do is try to sell you on something. That is not how I operate. That is not how I teach people to build relationships. So if you approach me in that way, I'm not going to engage with you. Okay, so you have to set those boundaries. This is not the opportunity to spam people. This is the opportunity to build and connect. So that's why you notice I'm not saying, oh, let's go find and meet up with 10, 15, 30 people a week. That's no. Now, when I was doing it, I was doing, I had a high goals of 10 or 15 a week, but that's because I was extremely um, aggressive about reaching out because when I started out on my own, I was I was working out of office solo. I no longer had people around me all the time. So I had to be super aggressive if I wanted to stay relevant and be uh, visible. And so my goal of 10 or 15 people a week, I literally keep track, kept track of it. I can show you the journals where I kept track of who I reached out to, who I had lunch with, who I had coffee with, on any given day, because that was how I was staying relevant and visible, okay? Yes, that can be a lot. Totally depends on your business. I was in the government relations business. I was a lobbyist. You can't stay relevant and visible hiding in your office. Same difference here. Regardless of what it is you're doing, you want to stay relevant and visible in your business in your company 
in your market. And in order to do it, you have to connect with people on a regular basis. Get consistent with it. Okay? Um, those are it. That's it. You know, be social in person and online. Do whatever you can, whatever you're comfortable with in person. All of these things apply to in-person meetings with the caveat of following whatever social distancing rules are in place at the time of, of respecting other people. There are some, you know, people's level of comfort uh, with meeting in person right now is all over the place. So, cons you know, consider that. Keep that as part of the conversation. Okay, and respect that, but don't give up and make that as a reason not to engage with people. It's a mistake. All right, so keep those things at the top of the, on your mind. Remember, you have to interact with people if you want to build relationships for the long haul, and we all need to do that. You have to make sure that you engage in social activities, whether it's in-person, socially distanced coffees, or whether it's a coffee chat that's held virtual. I call people all the time like, hey, you got 15 minutes, let's get on the phone. I'm going to drink my coffee. You know, whether you do it, maybe you're having lunch with someone virtually. Engaging in the happy hours and the galas and all of those things, you know, um, online and virtually. Don't pass them up. They are still opportunities. You can't get the opportunity if you don't show up. So show up. And then lastly, engaging in social media and using the various platforms to continue to build out your relationships, to connect with new people, and to, uh, to do those things that are going to be required of you. Because guess what? Life is moving on. The work is continuing. And you still need to be able to interact with people on a daily, monthly basis and weekly, uh, excuse me, an annual basis. So set yourself up for success and let's work through this plan of how you do it. If you want to lay out a more specific plan or what do you need to do, hit me up. We'll talk about it and we can make sure to um, set some time aside for a consult so that we can help you get on the right path for building out your network in the way that you need to, to achieve success for your career and your business. All right, that is it. It's been a pleasure being with you today and I'll check in with you again soon. Bye-bye.